Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, The Wealthy Mindset. It's yours truly, Money Making Mitch. And as usual, guys, this is not financial advice. Please do your own due diligence and research. I did a little bit of digging and uh, I think you guys are gonna love what I'm about to say. Let's start off with this. Happy holidays, guys. Uh, for those of you who are living in America, we're gonna celebrate Thanksgiving coming up. For those of you who are not in America, you know, the Christmas season is upon us before you know it. So happy holidays. Uh, Neo is trading at $7.43. It's down eight cents. I hold 2,260 shares at $3.53. And on the SoFi platform, I hold 401 shares at $8.99. Now, I spoke about the MPV, the multi-purpose vehicle in my video last night and why I think it's geared for America and Australia. I spoke in the past about us learning from past mistakes, like revealing an EV late, making it, we reveal an EV, but then we, we make it available late and people got tired of waiting for it and it went elsewhere. I also spoke about us ever evolving as a company. Remember what Charles Darwin said, survival is not for the fittest, but for the one most susceptible to change. And one person asked me about my concerns for NEO, about the delivery numbers. Everyone always asked me, well, Mitch, are you concerned about this? Are you concerned about that? Are you concerned about this? I said, I finally <laughs> responded to that person and I said, and this was from the video I did last night. I said, the only thing I'm concerned about, and I'm, very, I'm being very honest to you guys about this. I am not concerned about William Lee and Prince William Lee and his leadership. I am not concerned about the people that he's hiring, the geniuses like Ganesh Iyer. I am not concerned about our models and how well they are doing. Yes, you heard that right. We have captured 60% of the premium market share. Those investors with vision and with a little bit of intelligence will understand that it takes a lot to capture 60% of a market share when you're a new company. Imagine that. I, I'm, what we're doing is the same as what most EV manufacturers, not EV, sorry, not EV manufacturers, most car company did. We came out with high end to show the type of technology that we have and, are, and is capable of. And then we come out with the mass market brand, which we are about to flood the market, which will cause us to dominate. I am not concerned about the battery swap stations, which is about to be profitable, just like our charging stations are now profitable. Just like I was not concerned about the phones, they are selling like hot breads. What I'm concerned about is the trolls the negative rhetoric and the fake propaganda news stations here in the West that are anti-China and keep beating it down. And every chance they get, instead, of, what they do is they keep beating war drums. Why we need to fight China. Why China is our enemy. China is not my enemy. We need to do fair trade in order for everyone to benefit. One guy in the gym said to me, Mitch, he said, we need to, uh, China is the enemy. I said, so what, what do you suppose? We bomb them? Yeah. I said, but what if another country like India, which is rising as well, starts rising? Should we attack them as well? Yeah. I said, no, what we need to do is innovate as fast as they are and start making education affordable here. But anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> This is the only thing I'm concerned about, Western media rhetoric and propaganda and market manipulation that Li, Li King Hong speak about recently. So why am I saying all of this? Okay, 
William Lee touches on Neo's strategy, views on competition and more in internal remarks. Neo previously did its strategic planning based on a five-year length of time. So they used to strategize based on a five-year time frame. But now that market is changing so fast and so much uh, players and so much other EVs coming on the market. Like some people, some of the trolls, that's what they do. They just focus on that, right? Well, uh, at the time of Tesla, and they're right. At the time of Tesla, they were the only one. So Neo will fail, they say, because of the amount of competition. <laughs> so Neo should just stop producing cars. And EVs in their mind, that's how illiterate and nasty they are. So because of the market changing, the company has shifted to developing two-year strategies, not five-year. Remember I said, William Lee and our company is continuously evolving. Okay, a day before the November 21st announcement of the partnership with Chang'an Automobile, before that partner, beautiful partnership we just did, that a lot of people, a lot of, I shouldn't say people, the whales recognize it, that's why they bought more. But the uneducated investor did not understand the ramifications of such. Neo founder, chairman and CEO, Prince William Lee, gave an internal address to all employees on November 20th and answered employee questions. CNEV Post shared a portion of Lee's remarks on November 20th and now local media outlet Yi Chai has shared more. Lee's speech, which was aimed at celebrating Neo's ninth anniversary, touched on the company's strategy, his views on competition, and on the opening of the battery swap network. Neo had previously based his strategic planning on a five year time frame, but now that the market is changing so fast, the company has moved to two year strategies. Starting from July and August this year, every department of Neo has been working on very detailed two year business plans, Lee said. Now, this is the first time we're revealing this. This is why I said to you guys, when some people are crapping their pants, there are a lot of things that are going on behind the curtains that we don't know about, that, we, that are being put into place to keep up with what's happening and to, to, and to stay the leader. We did not capture 60% of the premium market space by chance. That did not happen by chance. It happened by us injecting a billion dollars into research and development every year. We're not making a car, we're making a computer. Neo is more focused on return on investment and projects that don't help the company improve its financial performance within three years are either canceled or delayed, he said. If it's not contributing, it's cut off. Despite Neo's layoffs in November, many of its key technology divisions instead increased headcount, such as its chip and self-driving teams. And why is that? I spoke about it in my last video as well. Xiaopeng is now investing in their own chips. We are leading. We are ahead of the game. Xiaopeng is, oh, well, Xiaopeng is delivering a couple, you know, like 800, 1,000 cars more per week than us. They are delivering cheap, lower end EVs. So when you do the math, we're still making more money than them. People don't get it. Here are the key takeaways from Lee's speech and employee Q&A shared by Yi Chai and translated. The very real challenge we are currently facing is that the transition from fuel to electrification in the premium market, in the premium market which we're in, is slower than we thought. Behind this fact, many things need to be summarized and reflected. The next competition will be more intense than imagined. In fact, we can already feel it this year. And one of the reasons why uh, the, the transition from the gas to electrification in the premium market is tougher now is we all know that the whole world is suffering with the economic crisis, which was mostly triggered from the pandemic, which led into the, um, the Russian-Ukraine conflict, which could have been settled. I'm not gonna get into that. So it affected world markets and world economies, believe it or not. So now we're evolving. And again, like I said, we're coming out with that sub-brand that's gonna 
totally dominate the market along with our battery as a service. We can already feel it this year with many of our pairs cutting prices as much as R&D 70,000 to R&D 100,000. Remember Tesla started that when they started feeling the pain? Uh, many of them have negative gross margins, especially those that only offer battery electric vehicle models. The, the qualifying round for the EV race is in its final stage. Listen to that very carefully, guy. And our current layout and direction needs to ensure that we have subsequent cards to play in the two most competitive years. He says in the two most competitive years. Starting in July, August this year, each division of the company has been working on very detailed two-year business plans. My God. And you guys think we don't have the right leadership? My subscri subscribers know we have the right leadership. I, uh, William, Prince William Lee is the right man for our company. Like Warren Buffett said, first and foremost, the CEO. We used to develop five-year strategic plans that covered a longer period of time, but now the market fluctuates too much and changes too fast. And a lot of it, guys, I think is because of AI. Technology is increasing at a massive rate compared to years ago. So if we look at things from a five-year perspective again, it may be easy to lead to unclear goals. Now we only do two years of business planning and think, think, and think things through for two years, not five. The R&D, which is the most important thing for us guys, research and development. The research and development cycle of many products and the input cycle of resources are about two years. And it is very important to think things through with a time dimension of two years. This is a consensus reached by the company's management team and we have carefully analyzed which things are high priorities and must be supported with resources like Alps, like Firefly. First, long-term investments in key technologies to be assured. Research and development. Remember, it's a computer. Technologies. We have to keep beating on technologies. Surviving is not our goal. That's not our goal. Living well and being competitive is our goal. Secondly, our sales and service capabilities need to ensure that we can cope with the fierce competition in the market. We started to build a capacity to be able to support monthly sales of 30,000 units from July, August this year, and we need to ensure sufficient investment. On the basis, we need to be resolute in improving efficiency and converting sales capacity into sales. Third, we need to make every effort to prepare for new products. Aha, uh -huh. Alps. Firefly, that multi-vehicle, multi-purpose vehicle that I spoke about. There are still a lot of things across the company that remained. And I'm not going to go into the complete report, but I want to tell you guys this. This is why, remember, we previously said we're not going to come out with a new model next year. And they're changing that because now we're doing things on a two-year basis instead of a five-year basis. Of course, we already know that lower end car is coming out next year, in the middle of next year. In the second half, I should say, of next year, might be before that. And we're going to flood the market with it in China and Europe first. We were saying that 2025 is projected to come into America, but that might be before that. I know we will probably hit Australia next year, for sure. The Australian Prime Minister were just in China this year to try to ramp up trade again. So I hope you guys are paying attention to what's going on. I hope you guys found this video to be informational, but also inspirational. If you did guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It'll help encourage me to keep doing videos for you guys. If you haven't yet subscribed, you might want to think about doing so because in this channel, we have that warrior mindset where we get rich or we die trying guys.